today I really felt like the word that I was going to share with you is valuable. You know, how valuable that a mother is, how valuable is Jesus, how valuable is families. And um, maybe I can get this pulled up. I also wanted to say I honor my mother who is here, (laughs) y'all. She celebrated her 90th birthday. Y'all think we can sing a happy birthday to mama for 90 years? Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mama. Happy birthday to you. Amen. It's an achievement and it's valuable. Uh, Something, you know, that has value is something that's a limited edition. Amen. Something that's rare, something that can't be found anywhere else. Won't find another one like it. And other people might be seeking after it. But value, we place value sometimes in the wrong places. I want to uh, tell you, hopefully you'll get a laugh out of this, five valuable things you never thought you'd say as a mother. Are y'all ready? And I bet y'all have some things to add. Number one, do not stick that tip. She was back there saying, Mama. <laughs> I'm like, what? What'd you do? She stuck that tic tac so far up her nose, y'all. I thought I was gonna wreck the car because as a new mom, I thought, oh God, she could die. You know, and you're you're panicking, and I pulled over. And anyway, I couldn't get the tic tac out, but good news for all you moms, if that ever happens to your children, a tic tac will make them sneeze so hard that it'll blow out, okay? <laughs> so that's one of the things I thought I'd never say. Another thing I thought I, I'd never say, because we I was going to be real sweet, was I brought you into this world and I could take you out. <laughs> what about when they get older? I've not had to do this with my kids, but I've heard other parents say, I'm not going to pay off your credit cards. Oh, that hurt, didn't it? <laughs> What about stop putting boogers on your brother? It's so nasty. <laughs> I was hugging one of the mamas today, and her kid was just picking that booger and having a snack. And I was like, <laughs> oh. and she goes, I just can't handle it no more. I just can't. I just let them do it because I can't get them to stop. Don't judge anybody. And number five, yes, we have to wear clothes today. And I will say, Josie, you hated to wear clothes. I think it was her, wasn't it, that street through the last church when she was a baby? Street, right through here. Poor nursery workers. I love you, Josie. She's over there going, payback is something. (laughs) So... It's a blessing to have children, and you have to laugh at some of these things because it's valuable. You know, you won't always have that happening in your house. And, uh, you know, and I hear that it's even greater with grandkids. So here we go. Maybe uh, I'll experience that one day. But, you know, when there's days that I feel like I'm sinking, I have this picture in my mind because... Some days you do get worn out. Some days things are just overwhelming, whether you're a mom or a dad or uh, just a human, okay? Every human, you're going to have those times. And, and that picture just reminded me of sometimes when I feel like I'm sinking. It's because, just like Peter, I forgot to keep my eyes on Jesus. I forgot to prioritize. And I tell you, Don't sink, but let this sink in. 
When this happens, take a breath and say, what in the world is most important? So I'll tell you, what, what does God value? What does he value? What did he give us that is such a gift? The first thing is prayer. Guys, you got a connection with King Jesus. You can at any time worship the Lord and get into this throne room of heaven and talk with God. That's valuable. And as a parent, you pray that your child knows Jesus. You begin to pray prayers that you never had to pray before. You pray for their protection. You pray for their future. You pray for their direction. You pray for the future spouses that you don't even know. You begin to pray. And if you're not doing this, you should. You should pray for the grandchildren that are not even in the picture and who they're going to marry. Your prayers are not stuck in this time and space. Your prayers move and they remain on the earth even after you pass on. Prayer is a priority for God. I've had desperation prayers and then I prayed for my own understanding and I want to sit right here a minute because it's one thing for me to tell you to pray. It's another thing to help you understand that there are different kinds of prayers. There's the prayers of intercession, prayers of confession, prayers of adoration, thanksgiving, and supplication. And you say, wow, that's a mouthful. Well, let me break it down a little further to you. I got a great picture showing you what intercession is. When I intercede in my prayer closet, And I begin not to say, oh God, please let this happen. I begin to say, God, I know it's your will that none should perish and all should come to repentance. And so in the name of Jesus, Lord, I stand in the gap and I lift this person up to you, whoever it may be. And I believe in the name of Jesus that this person will make it up that mountain, will make it to see you, God. Lord, I believe for their healing. We know God's a healer. He wants people healed. We don't have to guess it. We don't have to beg for it. We just have to begin to pray for it and believe with all our heart. But intercession is one powerful way. Another powerful way is the prayers of confessions. When we confess, God comes. He who conceals his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them will find mercy. I'll tell you something else in my prayers of confession that I do. I confess God's word. I give God's word back to him. I say, God, you said in your word that you wish to give us a hope and a future. I confess those things. You know, during our song services, sometimes when you're not able, you're like, I'm not a singer. I'm not really a musical person. Oh, I would never let anybody hear me sing. If you will just begin to say the words, you're confessing things that your heart will believe your voice above anybody else's. And sometimes we need to confess our sins to each other. If you don't know this by now, we're a very open church. What do I mean by that? Like we adoration and thanksgiving. You know, once you begin to pray for somebody and then you begin to confess God's word and you say, God, if there's anything within me, take it away, Lord. I don't want anything between you and I. You cannot help but walk into adoration and thanksgiving because you begin to thank God for one thing. It leads to the next. I mean, how could I thank him Less. I mean, it's just like the blessings keep flowing and they keep pouring out. And I exalt the Lord with the breath that's in my body. Prayers of supplication. 
Man, we run to God with that first when that really needs to come, but, but let it come a little later. You know, how many of you, you have children and those children, you just wish they'd call you and not want something. else but God else you could be. You're here and you're showing God. You're like, God, my faith on a Sunday morning is carrying value on you. That's amazing, guys. The God that I speak to, the God of this Bible, he also has value in his plan. Now, I could go over a lot of things that are his plan. But because it's Mother's Day, I stopped right here. In Genesis 1:28, his plan was that there would be male and female. Okay? That's important in these days. It's super important. He didn't make any accidents. And he does, he's not the God of confusion. He made male and female, and he made marriage. And he told them after he made them to go and multiply. You find that again in Genesis 6, 19, and that is incorrect. It's in that chapter, but it's not at verse 14. It's verse 8. So 6, 19 and 7, 8 says the same two things. When the earth had become corrupt and everything, God wanted to destroy it all. He said to Noah, I have found you righteous. You and your wife and your sons and their wives. 
There's again that holy moment of the male and female, but he didn't stop there. He said, I'm going to get you to build a boat and I want you to put two of every creature on that boat. And in these verses, he doesn't just say get two of every kind. He says male and female. It's important if God put it in there. Don't be confused. Amen. If you're struggling with your identity and you're listening to this, we're not against you. If you're struggling in areas that come against your gender, we're not against you. I'm for you. God's for you. And I'm telling you, if you deal with people like this, don't shut them out. Help them understand that there's something in their sin nature that's gravitating to that. But it's not pleasing to God. And we are not here to please ourselves. We're here to please our creator who made us exactly who we're supposed to be. Love people along. Amen. And the last thing, you know, God has this plan. So Noah is an example that God built an ark through Noah. And that ark survived the storm. And then he let people roam the earth again. But he knew, he knew that man needed a savior. So he gave his son for every person in the whole world. He didn't give him just for a certain select group. He gave him for every one of us. Man, you're valuable. God sent his son He sent him not only to die, but to miserably be treated. And you're worth that. One soul is worth that. You see, the things that God calls valuable is a soul. His plan is for souls to be saved. In Luke 15, 7, I tell you in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents more than 99 righteous people who don't need to repent. First John 4, First John 4, 9. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Somebody get that right now. Don't just leave that behind. Not so we would just live for him, but that we would live in him. That's powerful. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we should also love one another. (laughs) Let me tell you something very valuable that we don't like to run into sometimes. But if you've been through it, you grew out of it. Like there's something you gained from it. And that's suffering. Many valuable things are birthed through suffering. And mamas go through some suffering when we give childbirth. And sometimes when we're pregnant. I got a young mama I know right now. She's like, am I ever going to not be sick? <laughs> and I'm like, she's just pregnant. I'm like, yeah, you're good. there'll be a day. You will not be sick over this pregnancy. But I did say childbirth is coming. So you're going you're gonna to face some suffering. And as soon as a baby is born, a mom meets that baby with both great joy and great suffering. Because now a part of her heart is existing outside of her chest. I told some of you online, I said, we're going to be flooded with hearts around this place. And this is your key line. Children, if y'all don't know it, y'all are your mama's hearts. And they love you. And it's painful for them to discipline you. They don't, it's not fun. It's not fun. But the Bible says that God disciplines those he loves. And we follow the example of God that if we love you, we discipline you. That's powerful. In Hebrews 12, 2, it says, For the joy that lay before Jesus, he endured the cross, suffering, despising its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured so much hostility from sinners against himself, so that you won't grow weary. You see, the valuable job of suffering 
and the valuable job of parenting, this can go for mom, dad, sisters, and brothers, listen to this. The valuable job of a mom is to grow them up to be able to stand on their own in a way that they don't need you, but they choose you. I love this. Jesus still wanted Mary around. I think she's a great example. I love that. eyes on Jesus and you said, okay, I received the gift of your death for my pardon and my sins. The Bible says that we become born again. Fresh start, new beginnings in Jesus. It doesn't matter what the past is. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us. There's no one perfect, even the cutest little baby back there in the nursery. Until they repent of their sins, they're filthy in their sins. But the day will come when choices are made and we're teaching and raising our kids up to know the truth of God's word, to know their identity in Christ, to know the standards of heaven and how much God loves us and wants to make us a new creation. So I've been born again. You know that song they were singing this morning? I don't walk like I used to. I don't talk like I used to. I've been washed on the inside. I've been washed. I mean, I'm telling you guys, I just cry every time because I remember 
I didn't deserve it. I could not even fathom what God has done with my life. I didn't know I was going to have children. I lost my first one. And the doctor said, you know, you may not be able to have children. And then I look and I didn't receive that word, but I received his word. (laughs) And that's what you've got to go back to. What? what's most valuable because today it's not what should be valuable. God's given us an opportunity today to say, God, you are most valuable. I trust you, God. Is your life hosting a safe and secure place for what's most valuable? You see a person's heart is tied to what they value. You know what else is tied to what you value? Your time. Jesus spoke of this truth when he stated, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So you see, today is an opportunity. It's another opportunity that if we've gotten things out of order, we can put it back in order. And I'm going to tell you something. I love my family. I love my children. I love being a mother. I love being a wife. I love that I have my mother, but there is nothing in this world going to top my need and my love for Jesus. You see, sometimes we get that out of priority and we don't know why things aren't working. It's because we have to put him in the right place. He is on the throne of our hearts. Amen. And that's where he belongs. He can't be second. We can't be a family person and not a God person. So if somebody knows you, do they know that God is your value? Do you find yourself valuable? Are you walking around like you're not valuable? Are you dealing with insecurities, these, these lies from the enemy telling you that, that you don't deserve, you know, this life eternal, this love of God, this place called a church? I just dismissed those lies this morning. I'm telling you that God loves you so very much and he made you with a purpose and for a purpose. And the way you're going to find that purpose is not running after everything out there, but running to him. We're not running away from nothing. We're running to something. Amen.